in this video, I kind of wanted to show our journey on how we moved from Google Analytics to Post Hog, which we believe is such an amazing tool for entrepreneurs to be able to get that data that they need so they know to persevere or pivot. Okay, everyone, so I have some news, big news here today. My co-founder and I are officially pivoting. We don't know what we're pivoting to yet, but we are figuring that out right now. All we do know is we need to pivot. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, we've been working on a tool called Code Climbers the last few months. Uh, we started in about August and now it's November, so it's been a few months. And we've had some decent traction, some good positive feedback, but we have come to the conclusion that this isn't really a hot idea. So Code Climbers is a, we've kind of advertised it as this open source productivity tool for software developers. Um, pretty much what it allows you to do, and I'll just show you, it allows you to track the time that you spend automatically um, in the background of your computer. Um, and we kind of have been showing data that is more uh, pertinent to developers. And it was really interesting. We got some decent momentum at the beginning, but it just started to cool off. And one thing that I want to mention is as a founder, one of the hardest things is knowing when to pivot because some people pivot too quickly because they just don't give an honest effort on an idea. Like you have to give an honest effort and honestly try to make it work. <laughs> and sometimes people don't get that far. And so there is a time component to it. Like usually for an honest effort, it can take a month to two months, right? Uh, another thing is the data that you collect is extremely important. So Y Combinator talks about this concept of being stuck in the land of the living dead. And I like that idea because I think it was kind of happening to us for a second. And what they mean by being stuck in the land of the living dead is you get a lukewarm response. You get an average response to your product. You get some people liking it and some people using it. It's like just enough to keep you going and kind of lead you on when in reality you should just be quitting that idea. Whereas a really bad idea will just fall on its face right when you release it. And it'll be so blatantly bad and obvious that you know you need to pivot. So the dangerous ideas are the ones that are actually average. And we feel like this was ours. <laughs> and so to combat that, you need to, as a founder, collect as much qualitative and quantitative data as possible. So you need to be talking to customers. You need to be testing the vibes in the waters on, on social media by posting a lot and see what see if people engage, see if people are commenting back, asking questions. And so we did a lot of that. But what we also did was collect a lot of good quantitative data. And we made the mistake early on in August and September by trying to use Google Analytics to collect this, this quantitative data. Um, and so in this, in this video, I kind of wanted to show our journey on how we moved from Google Analytics to Post Hog which we believe is such an amazing tool for entrepreneurs to be able to get that data that they need so they know to per, uh, persevere or pivot. Um, and so the problem we had with Google Analytics, and I'm just showing like a Google Analytics demo account here. The problem with them is it just, the reports do not give you what you need if you're building, building software. Um, they're really good for like, I mean, Google Analytics is fine, if you're just creating like a marketing page and a landing page, it'll tell you like active users, you can check events. It's also not terrible for like e-commerce. Uh, I, I have a background in like Shopify and stuff. And it, it, and when you connect all of that, it brings in the data, but honestly, Shopify's reports directly are just better than Google Analytics. So I don't really know at this point what Google Analytics does better than other tools. It's obviously free and very accessible and it's Google, but there are other tools that are free including post hoc, which I'm about to show you. So we just had a frustrating experience. It's like, how does knowing the active users in the last 30 minutes, like going to help us know if we should continue and knowing these key events, it was just like so unactionable. So I'm going to walk you through post hoc. And the great thing about post hoc is right out of the box without a lot of customization, they give you a lot of the things you need. So this is kind of the main stats that like out of the box, they were kind of showing us and we just customized a little bit. 
So you get daily active users, which something really important that you always want to uh, do with software is you want to be able to define very clearly who is a daily active user or weekly active user, depending on them deriving value from your product. So for example, I know that like Twitter um, or X, I should call it, they count it as an active user if someone spends at least a few seconds on their timeline um, because that shows that they like maybe read a post or something. Whereas if they just went for a second to the page and then like didn't interact or do anything, that shouldn't count as an active user. And so the nice thing about post hog is if you go into this edit thing, you can actually, depending on their interactions, they have all these filters. You can say what is an active user, what is not. And so one thing that we did is our marketing page was at codeclimbers.io. We didn't want to count this as an active user. This was our marketing page. They weren't using our product. And so we were actually able to specify for daily active users, they actually need to be visiting this domain, which is where our product actually resides. And so really nice thing about post hog, they're filtering their ability to customize the reports and especially daily or weekly active users to your needs is awesome. So as you can see, we were getting just no growth here um, with daily active users and then weekly active users. We had some spikes and I'm going to talk about this in a second. So these are awesome. Like their, their filtering is amazing. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about each of these reports because I think they're awesome. They have this growth accounting, which pretty much says of these different, uh, during these weeks, how many of your users are new, returning, resurrect resurrecting, or dormant? So new means they're here for the first time. Returning means they came here last week. Resurrecting means they missed a week or two, but now they're coming back. And then dormant means this is just like your dead users that aren't using the app anymore. Okay. This is probably what I'm going to show you now. This triangle chart is probably the most important thing that post hog gives you. And I'm going to go into it uh, just to show you a little more. Oh, let's see. Well, let me go into view. Let's view this. Let's, let's, let's get a little more data on this. I'm going to explain what this chart is and why it is so extremely invaluable uh, to what you're doing in your startup and why it was one of the main reasons we decided to pivot. So, First is this idea of cohorts. When you're releasing a product, it's likely that you're making changes sometimes on a weekly basis. That can be changes in your how you're getting users to the site. You might be getting them from Reddit one week and the next week you're getting them from Twitter. And these are gonna be different type of people. Um, it might be different in terms of, you might change your marketing page and your messaging. That might be different. You might release a new feature or fix a bug. Because of these changes, if you're just looking, if we go back to this, if you're just looking at the absolute numbers of daily active users, weekly active users, it doesn't tell the full story of what the effect has been on your changes and on your improvements. And so by looking at this triangle chart, you can actually see it separates people into cohorts. And I'm going to break this down. As I said, we were using Google Analytics before in September, October. So I mean, September and August, so we didn't get this good data until then. Like, literally, we had no idea what to do with Google Analytics data. But with this, this is what it tells us. So September 29th to October 5th, 42 people in the cohort, okay? That means 42 people joined our app for the first time. They came in and used it for the first time, okay? And then as you can see, week by week, this is the amount of new users joining every week. And so we've been getting roughly... 30 on average over the last few weeks. Okay. 30 new. And we had a big spike this week. Um, and we've just been getting these users. Maybe that's a different video, but in various ways. Okay. Now what this shows is amongst that cohort, what percentage keep using it week after week. And so if we look at this first week, obviously the first week zero, when they joined a hundred percent of them, that makes sense. Okay. The next week, it two thirds dropped off only 33% of these 42 used it week two. And as you can see, our week one, co this, this first cohort here on record is actually not terrible compared to the other weeks. And that's because this is like our loyal users and like our friends that were kind of using it. And so we took this with a grain of salt a little bit 
uh, because, and it's, it's slowly just starting to drop off every week as well. And when you look at the other weeks, that's where we were really worried where this, like, look at these other weeks, including this week, 64. And this was like to a targeted, like this was to our email list of like people that were really interested. And like the next week, only 5% of people came back. Okay. And we're talking about like a tool right now that we're not even charging money for. Um, and if you look at the other weeks, they all tell a little different story, but the main trend is that everyone just stops using it. And you can also see this over time. And so this kind of shows the cohorts over time, these lines. And what you want to see with your app is usually it flatlines out. Like the the line, obviously you're going to have a drop off, but it like levels out. And it's hard to know like what percentage that should level out at. But as you can see, like ours, ours are just headed downhill continually. <laughs> Um, and so that was one thing that we were extremely worried about was like, holy crap, like this drop off is so dramatic. And then we're just like losing users. It's like not, we're not holding a line. And so this triangle chart, so important for that. Honestly, if we didn't have all this other data though, we probably wouldn't make a decision. You shouldn't make a decision just blindly off of one report, but coupling this with like very lukewarm responses on social media and just like not a lot of engagement. We were just like, something isn't sticking here. And so, yeah, but anyways, post hog, I would love to do like more deep dive into it, but it, they have like amazing things. Like they can show you your conversion funnel. Um, and I know Google analytics has something similar like this, but theirs was way easier to set up and the visual looks way better. It's way easier to understand, but we pretty much created a funnel that said like, okay, how many people visit the marketing page? How many people make it to the install page to install our app? And then how many people actually like use the app? So this is super valuable information. And as you can see, like our conversion rates were pretty poor. Um, they obviously show you like wh where stuff's coming from. Um, I'm just going to talk about, I know that we're already at 13 minutes here, but I just wanted to talk about a few more features of post hog that are amazing. And that helped us with our decision. One of which is session replay. So, Post hog actually allows you to record the uh, user sessions and we make this private. Obviously, some people might be worried about the privacy of this. We, first of all, we anonymized everyone. So we actually can't identify who this is um, and we anonymize their lo location. But then also it doesn't allow you to screen record like passwords and like emails and like things like that. Like that stuff's blurred out. But it, this is super valuable. Like literally my co-founder and I, we just like watched we and post hog allows you to do this we just like watched hundreds of these we watched how users interacted with it and after watching like hundreds of these over weeks it became very clear like people just weren't that hungry for what we were building um and so this was kind of like more on the qualitative side but it really helped inform our decisions as well as actually talking to our customers so like i said the goal of your startup is to learn as much as possible about when you introduce a product to people, you want to learn why they like it or why they don't like it. You need to try to make a decision whether to pivot or persevere. And so this stuff can be very helpful and post is amazing for that. And we could honestly, we could get into all these other features. Like they allow you to run a B tests for like statistical significance. They allow for in like in-app surveys. You can create like a survey that pops up in the app and people can give like qualitative feedback directly in your app. You can do feature flag. Like this is such a, an amazing platform for entrepreneurs building software. Like it's literally all of the things are built exactly for them. And the best part of all with post hog, and I'm just going to show you it's, it's free until you get bigger. So they do like a usage based model. Let's go to their pricing. Yeah. They're, they're funny. They make their marketing is really funny, but like they're, their stuff, like we haven't had to pay for it yet. And we're probably not going to have to for a long time because theirs is just usage based. Usually until you get to a bigger, a lot bigger like market and a lot more traffic, do you have to pay? And it's just based on usage. So for your intents and purposes, it's probably going to be free for a long time while you're just trying to get product market fit. And so post hog is literally like a no brainer. They also have like a really good team, really solid. They've been fun to interact with on Twitter. They actually sent me free merch. I'm actually wearing a postdoc shirt. This is not, this video is not sponsored by them, 
but I'm kind of doing this like quid pro quo. <laughs> like they sent me free merch because they're on Twitter. They just liked interacting with me and they're like, Hey, here's some free merch for, to support your entrepreneur journey. And I'm kind of, I mean, I wanted to show this video anyways, but quid pro quo, look it up. So anyways, that is, uh, that's my video and it's going to be really interesting what we do next. We might keep the code climb, uh, the code climbers brand name and just do like a different idea. We don't know what we're going to do next, but honestly, moral of the story, collect really good data, qualitative, both and quantitative and post hog is something that can really help you with that. So until next time. <laughs>